Welcome back. This segment is entitled Traditional versus Functional Orthodontics. During the 1980s, Dr. John Witzig, who was a general dentist from Minneapolis, Minnesota, was lecturing all over North America about use of functional appliances which were purported to grow the lower face forward, something that he'd learned from Europe. And he felt that these were superior to the traditional retractive approach of, of traditional orthodontics using a headgear and braces. This caused what I have termed a functional appliance war to occur. <clears throat> uh, it culminated in a lawsuit uh, called Brim versus Malloy, in which a patient by the name of Brim uh, was sued Malloy, uh, alleging that the TMJ problem occurred because of extraction and retraction. The fact is that Brim won the lawsuit to the tune of a million dollars, which got the attention of the orthotic profession in a very big way. So there was a lot of controversy and concern in the profession about the effect of functional appliances versus traditional orthodontics. That spurred an article from Dr. Lyle Johnson at the University of Michigan, which uh, is entitled Growing Jaws for Fun and Profit, a Modest Proposal. In this article, he compared traditional orthodontics, uh, as it was done, with so-called functional orthodontics and reviewed the literature. And he concluded that both groups were about the same and both, both approaches resulted in a moderate mid-facial dental alveolar retrusion. In other words, both jaws, the maxilla and the mandible, were back from where they ideally might be in the face. <clears throat> now, for me, it looks pretty much like these two people coming together on the West Side Highway in New York. It's kind of like saying, gee, we tied. In reality, uh, why would you want to be proud of that, uh, that we tied? Given the fact that, remember, Dr. John Remmer says, sleep apnea would not exist if the jaws were placed properly forward in the face. The point here is we need to be doing things to get the maxilla and the mandible to develop forward and not be uh, happy with having people have mid-facial dental alveolar retrusion. Further evidence from the literature to, on the importance of this uh, is, is needed. Here it states from the American Journal of Orthotics in 1986, Sleep apnea subjects showed a posteriorly positioned maxilla and mandible, a steep occlusal plane, over erupted maxillary mandibular teeth, proclined incisor, steep mandibular plane, a large gonial angle, high upper and lower face heights, and an anterior open bite in association with a long tongue and a posteriorly placed pharyngeal wall. In other words, this would be a great description of moderate mid facial dental alveolar retrusion, producing, in essence, sleep apnea. Here's another article uh, about kids. Approximately 10% of six to eight year olds have sleep disordered breathing according to a recent Finnish study. The risk is increased among children with enlarged tonsils, crossbite, and a convex facial profile. Convex facial profiles are frequently associated with both jaws being back. Another, another article out of the journal, journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine states further, uh, after tonsil and adenoidectomy, uh, these findings suggest that the persistence of sleep apnea after adenotonsillectomy may be partly due to the smaller size of the mandible in pediatric patients. And they propose that the maxillomandibular morphology should be carefully examined when a treatment plan is developed for sleep apnea children. In other words, getting the jaws forward, both jaws, is the, is the most important thing. Out of the British Medical Journal, states the combination of a long-faced, reduced nose prominence and width, and a retronathic mandible may be diagnostic facial features of sleep disordered breathing that may warrant a referral to specialists for the evaluation of other clinical symptoms. In other words, the jaws are back, greater chance of sleep apnea. Finally, let's talk about uh, uh, scalloped tongue. Uh, High-risk patients, we found uh, tongue scalloping to be predictive of sleep pathology. Tongue scalloping was also associated with pathologic polysomnographic data and abnormal malampati grades. The point is that the tongue gets scalloped because it doesn't have enough room. It gets scalloped because both jaws are down and back and it crowds the tongue. Finally, let's look again at the health implications of sleep apnea in children. Uh, we note that Dr. Ron Harper states, five hours of intermittent hypoxia can cause brain damage, which kills Purkinje cells responsible for motor coordination, and that a brain injury uh, at, at this age may result in uh, three to four times increased risk of hypertension. So what you have to understand here is this really isn't about teeth. It's about health, it's about faces, it's about airways, and it's very, very important. Uh, 
So the point here is, is there an alternative to traditional and functional orthodontics? Well, I certainly think there is, and I, and I hope that you'll agree. We'll talk about that in, in a future segment.